Hey Wanderers, and welcome back to the Wandering Gamer Network Plays Monster Camp. I'm Zach. And I'm Mandy, and we are choosing a song. Uh, It's Friday by Rachel Black. A Baby by Justin Bieber. Alright. Which song is most likely a form of government mind control in disguise? Oh, clearly it's Friday. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's not even... It, it, like, basically is. Week two morning. Okay, so I'm going to go to the manor. So we'll figure out what all of these are. You decide to get your tarot cards read while you're in the haunted manor. The wicked old lady who offers you the service said it'd be fun. The first ever card she... Or the flip, first card she flips over shows a photorealistic drawing of you flying on a hang glider directly into power lines. Is that good? You ask the psychic. <laughs> She wordlessly puts her cards away and vanishes into the darkness. Eh, it's probably fine. You gain plus two boldness and a new, a fun new phobia. Uh, what, hang gliding? <laughs> you and Damien are lounging together, having a surprisingly chill time reading comic books. I think I need to come here and get more boldness. This is going to sound crazy, but <clears throat> can you pass me that one that doesn't have someone putting his fist through someone else on the cover? Wait. Wait, what's this now? You're going to read an actual words that might describe something other than punching? Ha! Huh? What? No, who said that? I was just asking the one without someone punching so that I could eat it, obviously. Uh-huh, right. What did I say, Dahlia? I told you he's getting soft. But not so soft that he, you won't still come to the sand strangling and ocean kicking with us tonight, right? My biceps are ready to choke that sand right out. And I got special boots made with spikes on the bottom, and the sides, and the top, so I can really show those waves who's boss. Dahlia is like the love child of Scott and uh, Damien. Oh yeah, definitely. Oh uh, well, that does sound great, but... But? Speaking of the ocean, I was actually going to watch <clears throat> this documentary on dolphins tonight. I'm making popcorn, baking dolphin-shaped cookies, if you want to join. Wow! You've changed, Damien. It's no wonder that the wildfire hasn't appeared to you yet. What? What do you mean? I know you've been on the hunt for the elusive wildfire, and I know it's thus far eluded you. And I also know why. The wildfire only appears to those who are badass enough to be worthy of its unbridled glory and untamed majesty. It's true! I was just in the woods one day playing with the matches, and suddenly out of nowhere the wildfire just appeared! It was one of the most magical moments of my life. There's nothing like seeing a wild wildfire out in its natural habitat. Too bad you'll never see it. Face it, Damien. You're just not metal anymore. Not metal? Not metal? I'll show them who's not metal. Or I'll show them who is metal. It's me. I'm still metal. Now, now to prove it by becoming worthy of the wildfire. But how? From the sickest stick skateboard trick, escaping from a tank of water while chained and on a skateboard, write a poem, but a poem that's very metal. This uh, one sounds bold. The top sounds bold. Yeah. I think the bottom sounds like creativity or fun. Yeah. Well, in either way, those are my high stats. So, yeah, I guess I gotta go at the bottom. So cool. creative. Fuck yeah, of course. Nothing is more beautiful and poetic than the raging... Of the wildfire, so obviously a poem would attract it. But there's so many different kinds of poems. Sonnets, haikus, eulogies. What's the most metal variation of the most metal art form? Oh, and our cross expelling the word metal. It can't get any more metal than that, literally. Unless I pack it chock full of metal things. Damien contemplates <sighs> his literary masterpiece for about 12 seconds before reciting to you his finished work. M is for metal. Also for meat. E is for everything spicy I eat. T's for the terror I inflict on the masses. A, A's for... A's what I kick, which is everyone's asses. L is for the last letter of me in metal, and also for the... Or for longest, which is how I describe my de... Woo! Were you about to end your poem with a dick joke? How not metal? Um, no. Sure, Red Rocket. Anyway, it's not like poetry can't be badass. It's just yours that sucks. Aravi, melt this demon's motherfucking face off! Aravi and Hex, 
don't try to own us. Spit it. So, Ervie and Hex, don't try to own us. Spitting critical rhymes with a test plus ten bonus. My name is Dahlia and I've got nine pecs. Call me I fucked Newton because I invented sex. <laughs> Hell yeah. Now that's poetry, baby. I don't know. I felt like it lacked the deep thematic resonance or emotional maturity of my poem, but whatever. Aww. Thanks for having my back, Shelly. We'll lure the wildfire yet. Maybe Gotta next be. time we do a tag team poem like they did, but with themes. I'll tag team with you. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Damien said he wants to team up with you. No, he said he wants to tag team with you. <laughs> you love to see it, and you gain plus two boldness and plus one fun on the spot. So the the <laughs> you said tag team, and then you just went, and then continued on. <laughs> you doing okay, Mandy? I know what I said. Getting a little hot and bothered tonight. Okay, let's see the lake. You had to lake to get your tan on. Okay. <laughs> but as soon as you get there, it starts to rain. Most of the beach goers leave. But no, you will enjoy the fun lake day, damn it. You have a really rough morning and you won't let anything stop you from gaining fun. You aggressively splash on the lake and laugh as loudly as you can, hoping the clouds will give up on trying well, to ruin your day. The little guy on your shoulder is so happy. Yay! Instead, the lake gets struck by lightning. <laughs> Yikes. When you wake up from the electrocution coma... You're on shore and the sun is shining and you have a cool new facial twitch. You win. You gain plus two fun. Nice. Oh, well, that's cute. I like it. I like her little pentagram. Uh, you link up with Joy. It's it's very, like, oh, on brand. It is. She's uh, themed. You link up with Joy so you can practice summoning, summoning a wokeness elemental. You just composed the necessary tweet and drawn the sigil in ethically sourced lamb's blood when... Oh, gosh. Hey, you kids! Stop getting blood on the grass! Uh, why? Because it's my grass, that's why! I just bought this camp to turn it into a shopping mall, and the only blood I want spilled on my land is the blood of commerce! I kind of like how he's jumping between people, because like before they'd have like plot lines where it's like just one person, and yeah. now it's like kind of like a through line. Yeah. Also orphans, if it's profitable. Oh, gosh. What? You can't buy this summer camp. It's a source of happiness for so many people. Oh, I'm sorry. Is there a law that says things that make people happy can't be bulldozed? Never mind. I don't give a shit about laws. I'm rich. Too real, game. Too real. Right. You won't get away with this. Good always triumphs in the end. Pipe down, sugar. You'll love it. I'll put two hot topics in there so you'll always have one to turn to when the other one gets too mainstream. Now go get yourself another black mesh something and let the men work. Hmm? The CEO wanders off with his tape measure to figure out exactly how many sharper image outlets he can fit in the dome, leaving you alone with a fuming joy. Ugh, I want to punch that dick right in his asshole. It's like how Damien feels all the time, but for reasons. <laughs> He's right, though. We can't rely on natural forces to stop him. Our only hope is to turn to the supernatural. Hey, there's people in the background of the image. Yeah, I saw that. Joy whips out the biggest spell book you've ever seen and slams it down on the grass. Jeez, where was she keeping that thing? Oh, you don't want to know. <laughs> this is the tome of Bakunin. The most powerful collection of anti-capitalist magics ever assembled. Can 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 I see that, please? <laughs> right. There must be something in here that can put an end to that many man's horrible schemes. But what? You search the ancient pages for the perfect spell. You narrow it down to two options. Sacrifice a thousand shares of Fortune 500 stock to summon the invisible hand of the market. Construct the only artifact powerful enough to imprison a Monopoly man. The go-to-jail card. This seems creative. I love the bottom one. I don't know what this one is. Bold, maybe? Uh, maybe, if you think the bottom one's creativity, though. Or the bottom one could be fun as well, though, is the hard part. Ooh, creativity and fun are, like, very close in a lot of them. Yeah. This one's actually probably fun. Oh, yeah, maybe because it's, like, a board game. Let's do the top one. Not so oh. smart. No. 
Hmm, yeah, I did see that spell in there. Where are we gonna get 1,000 shares of Fortune 500 stock, though? Uh, you sure you can't just substitute whatever stock you happen to own? It's like how you substitute margarine for butter when you're baking. Ugh, you use margarine? Don't you know that stuff is made out of plastic and dog farts? I'm not sure... No time to green sutter. It's time for a sudden ill-advised action. You set fire to a thousand shares of blockbuster stock you've been holding on to and summon... The Invisible Hand of the Market! Uh, that doesn't really look like the Invisible Hand of the Market. For one thing, it's not invisible. For another thing, it's a giant floating green cock with the words FINANCE tattooed on the side. Oh shit, you have no idea how this happened. But instead of summoning the Invisible Hand of the Market, you seem to have summoned... The extremely visible cock of the market. Yeah, so I know we teamed up to stop capitalism's inexorable encroachment on the summer camp we love. But I kind of don't want to be seen with you right now. Why don't you deal with this giant cock situation and then maybe we can hang later. Or never. No! Joy leaves you alone with your giant money cock. It just floats there staring at you with its one eye. Ta it's unnerving. All right, kids. If you're going to hold up some kind of last-ditch bake sale or something, now's the... Oh my god, extremely visible cock of the market. I didn't know you lived here. I'm a huge fan. Can I get your autograph? Oh, that's right, you're a giant cock and have no hands. So sorry. This changes everything. All shopping mall plans are cancelled until the precious cock of the market relocates. You win this round, Shade. Enjoy your time with the market cock while you can. Contrary to his advice, you do not enjoy the market cock time at all. Mostly because no one wants to hang out with someone who's got a giant green cock floating around them all the time. You lose two charm and one boldness. Oh no! Alright, choose something good. TikTok. <laughs> Cheesecake. You know what? It makes me happy. Uh, likelihood that society would survive if said good thing was completely wiped from existence. I think... If said good thing. I think they're both extremely survivable. Yeah, right. We would all live without it. You've had the last two, so I'm yeah, going to take... Yeah, I'm okay switching. Shade. Okay. Camp down. I'm going to go manor. <clears throat> that day in the haunted manor, you actually stumble upon a cult meeting in the hallway. The cultists are wearing terrifying black robes, standing over a bloodied body and chanting. You try to flee, but one of them shoves a flyer in your hand. The ink burns in your eyes to read, but you manage to find the words, new recruits, get healthcare benefits with same day sign up. Yeah. What? Sold. You gain a bunch of new cult buddies and new insurance that covers fun to... That covers spontaneous plus two boldness growth. Cool. I like the the shirt. Oh yeah. That he had on the stripes. Afterward, you're hanging out with the number one summer crush, Joy. It's national fondly reminisce on the past day. So she's slipping through the pics on her phone with you. Ooh, this was back from season three, right after we beat that mutant spider. Faith looks so cute in this one, and look at that awesome Fleetwood Mac T-shirt I'm wearing. That t-shirt was so cool. It was vintage from the 78 tour. Stevie Nicks blessed it herself. Whatever happened to that shirt? Did I sacrifice it to the goddess or something? Hmm. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. I don't know what that was. I remember exactly where I left it. Fuck. <laughs> Joy makes a mysterious phone call and she starts asking about the Fleetwood Mac t-shirt. But the person on the other end of the line is obviously not being chill about it. Listen, what freaking name is that? Axorax? Listen, Axorax. I know things ended badly between us, but could you please give me back my Fleetwood Mac t-shirt? I specifically remember leaving it in your evil lair. I know you know which t-shirt I'm talking about. I definitely didn't, or I didn't leave multiple t-shirts in your lair. No, there is definitely no need to discuss it, just discuss it in person. Do not portal here. Suddenly, a magical portal opens. 
an objectively sexy centipede person emerges. And they are giving off palpably villainous vibes. We need Cody for his uh, Camilla Joy, voice. baby! I've come to speak <laughs> with you in person, just like you wanted me to. You look as lovely as that day I wrapped you up in my bug silk. No, Axorax, I specifically did not want to talk to you in person. You're doing that thing again where you gaslight me into spending time with you, which is bullshit. Ugh, Shade, I mean my ex, Axorax. They're a magical evil centipede I defeated back in season three. I know they look hot, but don't let your guard down. They mind-controlled everyone in Philadelphia and tried to make all citizens jump into a pit of centipede venom. Careful, Philadelphia. I don't remember this happening recently, so you might be on the docket soon. Right. <laughs> oh, you make me sound so evil, Joy! But that's all in the past now, gorgeous! We should focus on the present and this very important t-shirt debacle. Why don't we ditch this third wheel? You and I can go out for coffee and talk it over. Or perhaps we can enjoy a romantic dinner. Do any restaurants around serve pre-chewed aphids? Ugh, Axorax, if I go get one coffee with you, do you promise to immediately hand over the shirt? Show me the shirt right now before I waste my time. Oh yes, let me check inside of my carapace. Oops, oops, silly me. Looks like I forgot to bring the shirt. Guess we'll have to keep hanging out until my portal spell recharges. I've told you so many times I'm not okay with us hanging out. Because we always end up getting back together. It's a toxic cycle, but fuck it, I really want that t-shirt. Axorax is stressing out your potential thick goth girlfriend. Uh, unacceptable. Get that Fleetwood Mac t-shirt for Joy by any means necessary. Set up a black market exclusively for buying and selling Joy's b belongings. You tr you'll you trade it for t-shirts. Call the police and send out an Amber Alert for the t-shirt. Axorax can't hide from the power of a vigilant community. Uh... I don't know. Um... I think the top one is smart. That's kind of what I was thinking, which means the bottom one is the right option. <laughs> yeah. Oh, frick. Ugh. An Amber Alert seems like it might... Oh, this is you. Seems like it might be a waste of public emergency services, but it's better than watching Axorax drink coffee through their proboscis. Let's go, or proboscis. <laughs> you enjoy going to the police station and file a missing t-shirt report. You describe the t-shirt, beloved Vin... Vintage smells like heavy metal concerts and burning sage. The officers are supportive and concerned. Did you say that this was a Fleetwood Mac shirt and it's vintage? This is serious. We're assigning our best detective to the case. Yes, yes, it's me, Detective McBooty. <laughs> We're going to find that missing shirt, officers. Remember, the first 24 hours are the most crucial to keep the case from going cold. I've sent out all the alerts to local cell phones. We've been conducting interviews with t-shirts lovers in the areas, and the community search parties will begin immediately. Wait, I appreciate the help, but you're misunderstanding. We already know who has the Fleetwood Mac shirt. It's with my ex, Axorax. A true detective never works off assumptions. We'll get your t-shirt back through the power of deduction and evidence, my dear Joy. Six hours later, Detective McBooty concludes that, yeah, Axorax definitely has a t-shirt, duh. You there, bug person. Detective McBooty, FBI, stop right there. Hand over the Fleetwood Mac t-shirt and we'll escort you to prison. I don't think so, little detective. For you see, according to centipede person law, I'm entitled to post-breakup joint custody over this t-shirt. What? No, you're not. Axorax, that t-shirt is mine. I left it at your lair after we hooked up. We never discussed custody. Hmph. I suppose we'll just have to settle this in a long, lengthy t-shirt custody battle. Mwahaha. Best is right, Detective McBooty says. Until we get a warrant, we can't touch a hair on that t-shirt's head. Sorry, Joy, my hands are tied. See you during opening litigations, baby. What a fucking nightmare. Shade, why do your ideas always make things worse? Because I keep picking smarts and it's not my thing. Get out of here before I curse you. Oh, wow. Minus three boldness. Yikes. 
And the worst of all, you waste the taxpayer dollars on a pointless t-shirt wild goose chase. Shame, shame upon you. Uh, okay, let's see. What, what did HQ get you? I don't remember. Uh, hang on. Smarts. Smarts? No, smarts was the woods. Charm is the... Uh... Creativity, then. It was creativity. Um... What should I boost for Damien? Probably smarts and boldness for him would be my guess. All right, woods it is, or do you want? Yeah, because I'm. Yeah, in... we'll do woods for smarts. That day you get lost hiking in the woods. You use the stars, aka nature's compass, to get back to camp. Uh, this will be a long episode to get through this, and then we'll probably end the episode there. The stars actually teach you all sorts of things, like how to uh, how one of the stars in Orion's belt is actually a nebula. The stars also teach you Italian, the quadratic formula, and the true meaning of friendship. Wow, the stars sure are smart, and they give you plus two smarts. Maybe I should just go start boosting my smarts, because that's all I seem to be picking. <laughs> You're resorting your collection of Pokemon cards, thinking wistfully of the Terry Taxman you once traded for an Arctic colonialist Ernst, Ernest Shackleton, when you're interrupted. Hey, babe. There you are, Shelly. <clears throat> I've been looking everywhere for you. Those words warm your heart more than any fire ever could, even more than the wildfire for which Damien is presum presumably searching desperately once more. Okay. I'm searching desperately for the wildfire once more. Oh, good. And there it is. Since you were such a big help last time, I thought you might want to try again. I mean, you weren't a big help as to actually bring the wildfire. Rude. But I did appreciate your support and enthusiasm, and mostly if I do find the wildfire, I'm going to need a witness to prove it. I realized our approach last time was all wrong. Yes, we pulled off something radical on metal, as only I could, and with you watching, I guess. But the fire is most known for being radical. But what? But is fire most known for being radical on metal? Yes, of course it is. But it's also known for being dangerous and reckless, obeying no laws and fearing nothing. The wildfire will not appear simply to those who are radical or metal, or it totally would have already come to me. I need to do something truly, unmistakably dangerous and reckless to lure the sneaky wildfire out. Any thoughts? You're so tempted to tell Damien that the appearance of wildfire is based on weather and foliage, not worthiness, and Aravi was just fucking with him. But doing that would be against your own interests, since it would cut short this valuable bonding time. So you make up some reckless, dangerous, stupid bullshit, because apparently putting your crush in danger is worth it for you as long as you can do shenanigans with him. You should really do some introspection about this later on vis-a-vis -vis your priorities and ethics, but for now you pitch Damien the best idea you've got. Enroll in an expensive university and declare a useless major that has no job security. So reckless. Someone truly reckless would travel at 150 miles per hour in a Ferrari being driven by a cat. Cats don't give a fuck. I mean, this seems smart and bold. <laughs> so. Yeah, so my smart and boldness are the same. So it doesn't really matter. Which one do you want? Um, I'm going to go with the bottom one. Yeah! Yes, I'm into it. I'm into it. And I can always scare up a Ferrari at a moment's notice because that's how badass I am. Yes, it is. But where the fuck are we going to get a cat? Uh, <clears throat> hello, friend Damien. Hello, friend Shelly. I found this cat in the woods and I have been searching for the rightful owner. That cat is so derpy. It is. Well, I found him. That's me, the rightful owner of the cat. Is this true, friend Damien? You do not seem like the type to voluntarily take care of a small, helpless creature with love and care. Well, according to some people, I've completely changed and I'm no longer a hardcore badass, so I need this cat to lean into that and complete my transformation into a responsible, non-reckless person? I am so glad to hear that. I will return the cat to you. I feel like we have much more in common now that I know you care for this cat the way I care for my plants. Oh, succulents would have been uh, Damien or uh, oh, Calculester. Yeah. Well, then who was? Then maybe a Viri was. I don't know. Uh, I'd have to look at that. Is, um, what's it called again? Uh, was efficient farming? Yeah, something like that. Of course, yes, of course. I'm not going to do anything reckless or dangerous with this cat. Smash cut two. Wait, did Damien just say smash cut? Oh, shit, that was a smash cut somehow. You're now speeding down the highway at 200 miles per hour in a Ferrari driven by a cat. Driven is in quotes because the cat has no thumbs and its little paws don't reach the cast pedal. So it's a cat in the driver's seat and Damien's foot fucking gunning the Ferrari. 
The Ferrari crashes spectacularly. Of course. You, escaped un you escape unscathed because you're the protagonist of your own life. Damien does a dive roll out of the Ferrari, clutching the cat to his chest. Woohoo! We did it! I saved the cat, proving although I'm badass with a stone cold exterior, I have a heart of gold. Whoa! That was actually pretty sick! Yes, there's no way that the wildfire can doubt the worthiness of that cat. It was the one driving the Ferrari. I'm sure that the wildfire will to appear to it soon. Ah, I didn't even think of that. Don't worry. We'll get it next time. We'll find that wildfire once and for all. Just watch us. Us? We? It sounds like Damien is starting to think of you as a team. Sick. Plus two fun and plus one charm is all yours, baby. All right. We'll finish this up with this. Choose a movie. The Incredibles. Love Actually. Uh, likely that thousands of years from now, archaeologists will use said movie to explain how society functioned in the 21st century. Start debating now. I hope it's that one. I hope it's The Incredibles. <laughs> that would be great. Maybe this year will just give us all superpowers. All right. We'll stop here, though. So until next time, everyone, keep wandering. Bye! Hey Wanderers, and thanks for listening to the Wandering Gamer Network Plays Monster Cam. We hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to hear more content from the Wandering Gamer Network, check out the link in the description below. We have several actual play podcasts, including Naptown, Run in the City of Mist System, and Outlaws Wanted, our homebrew space adventure. Until next time, keep wandering. <laughs>